How, yeah. how could we best describe you, Derek Ogilvy? I have no idea what you've been saying. No, it was Dutch. <laughs> you don't speak Dutch? No. Not well, I word? understand some things, but but not not everything. Okay. Welcome here in the studio. Thank you, Marco. Um, how could Arna, we best? How are you? Hi. <laughs> I'm fine. How are you? Good. I'm Good. glad you're here because you look at you make me feel as if I've got hair. Oh. You, yeah. yeah. You make yeah, me well, feel co- that I've compared got to hair. me, everyone yes. has more hair because <laughs> <laughs> all my hair is falling out. I think I have to translate yeah, well, sometimes uh, yeah. the words. Ja, nou goed, hij zei, ik ben blij dat ik, uh, dat ik hier ben. En ik, het lijkt nu net alsof ik heel veel haar heb nu ik Arnoud zie. Want dat Arnoud is natuurlijk... Ja, maar dat is al heel snel. Heel kaal ook. natuurlijk, ja, ja precies. Ja. Ja, voor mensen die tv zitten te kijken, die kunnen het ook allemaal gewoon zien. Derek. Um, Marco. Yes. <laughs> last time you were here, you, you said, uh, I'm going to Los Angeles. When was the last time I was two... here? I think we did a Saturday show together, yes. didn't we? Yeah. yeah. Three years ago, I guess, two, no, three I years ago. I think it was about... 2014, 2015, maybe 2015. Yeah, okay. Almost yeah, I went to America and I made a pilot for WE, which uh, is a network in the States, but uh, they decided not to go ahead with a series. And that sometimes happens. A lot of, lot of networks invest a lot of money into various um, projects and not all of them are taken on board. So it was a little bit, a little bit very disappointing. But um, it doesn't mean I'm going to stop with with trying to get a show in America. And mm-hmm. I'm working still with some people over there. And um, we'll see what happens this year. Hopefully this year something positive will happen. It'd be good for something nice and positive to happen. <laughs> and, and show is in Holland? <laughs> yeah, I'm going on tour. And uh, we start on Sunday. I'm, I'm doing 18 shows throughout the Netherlands. And my first show is in Emmeloord on Sunday. And What's your first show? My first show. It's not it's the premiere. premiere. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could say that. Wow, yeah. there it's there. Derek Ogilvy in your town tour, January and February 2018. In Emmeloord ook. In Emmeloord, first show in Emmeloord. Hij, hij is dus naar Amerika toe gegaan. Hij wilde zijn show daar promoten. En uh, hij heeft een pilot gedaan. Alleen het uh, station zag daar niet zoveel heil in. Wilde er geen geld. Er wordt heel veel geld in veel programma's ja. gestoken. Maar in zijn show wilden ze op dit moment geen, uh, geen geld steken. En daar is hij heel erg teleurgesteld ook al. Ja, maar hij zegt, hou er niet op. Hè. Ik blijf het gewoon proberen in Amerika. Ja. ja. En if anyone wants to come, I think there's about... 60 tickets left. Yeah. I think it's about 60. It runs fast. Emily yeah, is bijna yeah, we should uit. sell out. We should sell out this week. But but how could we best describe you? What 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 do you do? What what can we see where you go uh, when I go to the show? Well, I'm a medium and I connect with the spirit world. So the people who come to the show generally are those who are looking for a message from loved ones who've passed away. And um hopefully I I I I would say the shows are entertaining. Mm-hmm. There, I always say there's sort of like a, an emotional roller coaster, because I'm quite fun on stage. But there are moments of sadness and and pain because obviously people have lost those that they love. But um, the fun and the laughter come from the messages that come through and the the validation of the spirit world. I'm I'm very conscious of validation. You know, when you're a psychic, half the people love you and half the people hate you, mm-hmm. and. Um, <laughs> So everything about the work that I do is about validation. And the people that criticize me are the people who, you know, they they say that it's not real. So I'm very conscious when I connect with the spirit world. Mm -hmm. Um, But you can prove. Of getting details, of getting details that no one could possibly know. So that validates that I am am connecting with someone. But how can you prove it's real? You You can only prove it's real through the fact of giving detail. But the the thing is, I'm not in control because I'm using a almost like a third party. I'm mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I'm relying on a spirit A turning up. Not like B a switch. Connecting. No, not really. When you're doing a theater show and there's three, four, five hundred or I don't know, a thousand people in the audience depending on where I'm performing, um, you're hoping the, the, the strongest spirits will come through, the spirits who are, who've got the most energy and the the most um, the most things to say. Um, so you're 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 in a positive situation there that you're going to pick up on that. But mm-hmm. obviously when you're doing a one-to-one reading, there's not always the validation or the, the connection with the spirit world. And that's when I when I used to make shows with RTL, we would make a series of um, eight episodes. Generally, the eighth episode was the uh, combination of all the shows, uh, the best bits. So of the seven episodes, we would normally have a couple of uh, maybe two or three uh, families per episode. So we would always look for extra families because when I went to someone's home, um, I wasn't always guaranteed a connection. Yeah. And and I could turn up and, 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 and do a reading and 
there's no one there. Yeah. And I can, and I, or, or I'll get a little bit of information and it's not strong enough and I just say, look, we can't do the reading and I have to stop. Okay. okay. So um, I think I think that honesty is very, very important. You know, I, I'm not in control. When I'm connecting with a child as well, when I'm working with children, I'm not always in control. The child the child's going to connect with me. Mm-hmm. But the wonderful thing of working with kids is there's an outcome. So people who say, well, you don't actually talk to the kids and it's all nonsense. My My, my return to them, my retort to them is, well, how come within a week I've got the kid to sleep or I've got the kid to be able to eat or the kid's starting to talk? So that's the interesting thing about working with children is you've well, actually um, got a strong validation. Then I have a kid for you. <laughs> okay, then. Yeah. We can start work tomorrow. It's a baby, huh? Still a baby. Yeah, it's, it's a yeah. baby. Yeah, yeah. We moeten even uitleggen wat hij daar eigenlijk allemaal gezegd heeft. We kennen hem natuurlijk van heel veel shows. Ja. RTL, daar heeft hij ook destijds die huisreadings gedaan. Kwam nu met de mensen thuis, maar het was niet altijd mogelijk ook om een reading te doen. Want dan kreeg hij... Of geen, of te weinig informatie. Dus hij is nog steeds wel op zoek naar uh, nieuwe families ook. Of hij, ja, of, of, en, of, of hij kan even geen contact maken. Dat is ook wat dat op dat wil. moment, ja, ik bedoel, geesten slapen misschien ook wel eens een keertje. Of mm-hmm. hebben er geen zin in dan ook. Ja. En um, hij, hij begrijpt ook dat er in Nederland toch wel wat, wat kritiek is soms op zijn, uh, op zijn optredens. Weet je wel. Want hoe bewijs jij, jij vroeg hem ook, van hoe kan je bewijzen dat het echt is, dat ja. je contact hebt? Hij zei, ja, dat kun je natuurlijk alleen maar doen door uh, te zeggen wat in je opkomt. Hij, hij is gewoon de eerlijkheid zelf en zegt, dit is wat in mij opkomt. En de ja. mensen zelf, over wie hij wat vertelt, die moeten dan maar uh, uh, valideren. Weet je wel, zeggen of het waar is of mm-hmm. niet. Dat, ja. is, dat is het enige. Hij, ja. me, niets meer dan dat. Hij beweert niet, hij zegt alleen, ik voel iets en dat geef ik nu door. Mm-hmm. Um, I love this camera behind me, by the way. See this camera? It's behind me. Look, it can yeah. really show my bald bit. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize I was losing as much hair. That's the hair. truth about it. Yeah. But it doesn't hurt. It's very confrontational. Be- 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 before we go on with the with the, with the the show and with the, with our uh, interview, yes. uh, I, I, I looked up for a song. Well, I know what you're going to do now. You're going to embarrass me, aren't you? You're going to hurt me. <laughs> I've talked a yeah, I understand yeah, yeah. there's an agenda of this interview, and the agenda the, is to, to play my song for yeah? a couple of years. <laughs> Do you, do you want me to play well, Can I song? tell the story of this song? Yeah, of no. course. Yeah, Listen, let me sh- tell you a little song? bit about it. Uh, when, I was, uh, story? when I was in my teens, I, I well, I started playing guitar. Uh-huh. Trying to play guitar and I had a little drum kit from when I was a very, very young kid. And uh, was always singing and uh, I played the accordion. And I always wanted to be a pop star. But um, And I tried to get a record deal when I was about 18 or 19, but it didn't happen. So I've always sort of been writing songs all of my life. And I thought a couple of years ago, why not just have some fun? And I'd written a song in Cyprus and I went to see... Um, um, forgotten, he's forgotten, forgotten the name of the producer. It'll come back to me in a, in a second. And um, very famous producer in the Netherlands. And he thought it was really cool. And we put the song together and I brought it out. And it was just a bit of fun. Yeah. And you're going to play it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's called uh, Stand With Me. Stand With Me. Here, Mr. Derek Ogilvie with his first and probably last <laughs> scene. Wow. Omdat hij gewoon een keer ook popster wilde zijn. Precies. Ik schrijf een liedje op Cyprus. in some <laughs> I thought you were putting in some earplugs there. Yeah. Well, I know. I do. Was this a was this a, a huge hit? 
No, of course not. No? No, well, it was fun I, to I do. don't think it's even got 10,000 uh, viewers on YouTube. I didn't make a big... I, look, I did it for fun. It was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad I did it because I wanted to get it out of the way. And um, it's, a, it's a good song. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, 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 th- there's some there's some emotion behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my father had died and my friend had just killed himself. Oh, I remember that story. Yeah, yeah. and... Um, a lot of people were supporting me in my life at that time, and mm-hmm. uh, that's why I wrote the song. But I didn't want to make a big deal about the the impact of why I wrote it. But that's the actual truth behind it. Mm-hmm. That's called. That's why it's called "Stand with Me." Yeah, okay. it's about your friends standing with you when you go through a lot of pain and anger and the fear and uh, the negative aspects of life. But what did your father think about it? Well, he was. <laughs> oh. Um, I haven't talked to him about that yet. No. Oh, I see where you're coming from. No. Because he's passed, you're, you're yeah. assuming that he talks to me. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to go there. Um, I don't really want to, I don't want to go there. Okay. Okay. So, but your new show. Yes, is it, is my new the, theater show. Is it the same as the other shows? You, you, well, obviously it's the same in the in the context of, you know, I go on stage and there's an audience and I connect with the spirit world and we, we take two, two and a half hours to do a show. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that context is always the same. As I, if I was a singer, I'd be singing one, the same songs. Um, yeah, but it's <laughs> still the same uh, uh, principle. But people are go- coming into the theater and they can call you, or you, you get some information. Well, and you well go it's to really the strange what happens. I mean, sometimes I just I just go to a particular person in the audience, or sometimes mm-hmm. I'm led to them by a spirit who comes through, or sometimes a spirit will come through and um, give me information and I will try and find someone in the audience. Yeah. And I'm hoping that, you know, the people in the audience will be, you know, honest about that the reading's actually for them. Because that's and we don't have a Rambam shows, yeah? situation whereby um, oh, yeah. they pretend that the reading's for them and then they spoil the show for the actual person who should have got the reading. I mean, I love the Rambam thing because, you know, if you actually watch it on YouTube, you'll see the lady who actually should be getting the reading in front of the so-called journalist mm-hmm. putting her hand up constantly. And I feel really sorry about that because obviously they stole a reading for someone that should have been for the actual person in the theater. But... No. but okay, <laughs> I vertelde eigenlijk dat hij dus... Yeah. Uh, uh, nou, Arnaud vroeg van... Well, the only reason uh, I'm bringing show? that up is one because, moment, because moment, I've please. not had a chance please. ever to discuss it. One moment. Yeah. Yeah, I can <laughs> translate. We have Thank to translate. Marco. Yeah, we have Thank to you, translate. Marco. Yeah. Uh, deze show is eigenlijk een beetje hetzelfde als wat hij altijd deed. Hij gaat gewoon op het podium staan. Er zitten er mensen die willen een reading. En dat is nou eenmaal. Ik bedoel, als het een zanger is, die verdient ook zijn beste hits. Ja. Dus, nou, dat is ook zijn kracht natuurlijk. Ja, precies. Dat is zijn kracht. En uh, dingen als Rambam, dat soort programma's waarin uh, dat soort mediums zelfs ontmaskerd zijn. En zijn, nou ja, goed, dat, ik vraag me af of dat dan ook helemaal eerlijk is. Want dat was eigenlijk een reading die bedoeld was voor iemand anders. Ja. En hij heeft nooit de kans gekregen om in discussie te gaan Precies. met een journalist. In feite ja. zelf ook. Ja. Dus dat, uh, dat is waar. <laughs> Go, where were you? <laughs> well, I don't know where you are in the conversation. Sorry. So uh, you were just explaining about yeah, the... Yeah, about the Rambam thing. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I and think, I mean, show. I never came out at the time and, and, and stood up for myself, and probably I should have, but um, no. re- life life's always wonderful when you look back and you realize the mistakes that you've made yeah, and, the, and the things you should have done. But, but I've always get... been someone who's never... I've never um, lived my life in the spotlight. I don't have showbiz friends. I don't go to every red carpet. I don't basically go to the opening of every envelope. You know, I don't. I don't... <laughs> Well, some people do. Some people use that yeah. as a way to constantly yeah. be in the limelight and to constantly make sure their records are selling or their shows are... are and, and that's the way it works in the media, and, and that's fine. But, you know, I've always kept my life very, very private because that's just the way I was... I feel comfortable with. And yeah. anyone who's came out and criticized me, I've just also kept that very quiet because I didn't want to cause an uproar. I didn't want to be someone who was agenda-led and trying to, you know... I know what I do and I know I do it very well and if I if I hadn't if I wasn't doing it very well then I wouldn't be as successful as I was and I think I've got a huge fan base in the Netherlands that has been amazing and stood by me especially over the last couple of years where I've had a situation well, I where I last weekend I told some friends I got Dargography in the studio I said yeah. wow go great Right? Yeah, well, I've not, I've not know, been on television that's what for... You have, I mean, yeah. the last time I made a TV show here was five years ago. I made a TV show in April, May 2013. Yeah, so but I've, you've got a solid name yeah, now. Yeah, so I'm still... And I'm touring. And, um, you know, and the sales have been fantastic on my tour. And, 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 and I Is really appreciate... Is it hard appreciate. to sell, sell tickets for the show? No, now? actually, it's... it's no? no, because we, I, I, I've learned... You know, I've been touring since 2007. Yeah. And um, so I, I and, and before that in the Netherlands, I was touring in the UK. I was doing... Well, I, del, I used to do... A little show in, in Ireland, and I toured Ireland, and I was doing a lot of theatre shows in Scotland. So I knew how to do it, and I was therefore in a position whereby I've got a lot of experience of putting things together. Um, so for me, um, coming here, you know, obviously 
phoning a theater, they know immediately who you are. So they're very, well, generally very keen to, to have you on as a guest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And social media is an incredibly impactful uh, medium to be able to promote your shows. And I've, I've used Facebook tremendously to, to promote and um, that's worked brilliantly for me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not really someone who lives their life on social media. I think social media has a positive and a negative aspect to it. Mm. And um, we always have to be very, very careful what's out there and uh, what, how we project and how we comment on other people. Because um, it's very easy to sit behind the keyboard, isn't it, at home and be incredibly nasty and, 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 and a lot... You know, I, I, I get my fair share of that and sometimes I find it really fun to, to read some of the comments because obviously I don't think they're very balanced. But um, from a point of view of selling out, yeah, I mean, it's incredible how yeah, in Winshoten, I'm doing, I'm doing a theatre show in Winshoten. I think winshoten has got a population of about 25,000 people. I've sold 1,100 tickets there. And, um, well, you know, it's just incredible how people in that sort of area would su support... Um, someone like me who's not been on television for such a long time. Mm -hmm. So I think my fan base here has just been fantastic. The support from people is... And it's so easy to say that, isn't it? Everyone's fantastic. And, but I mean that genuinely from the heart. Yeah. Genuinely, I do mean that the support has been fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Well, I always say that, 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 that after um, times of explaining what you do, yeah. I think the best revenge is having success. And if I look at your to tour schedule, uh -huh. there are uh, five, six theaters are who are sold out. Yeah, so. and, and and some will be sold out this week. Yeah. And I think I think that that's testament to the great people I have around me. I've got some. You know, I don't know. There's an elephant in the room. And if you want to talk about it, you know, I'm in litigation with a, a major media company at the moment. So, you know, it's it's not that easy sometimes to have support where I need that support to be because some people don't want to deal with me for whatever reason. And so I think... We have to translate it. Uh, ja, in eerste instantie zei we van, uh, is ja. het moeilijk om die theaters vol te krijgen? Hij zei, nou goed, ik heb natuurlijk voor het laatst in 2013 een televisieprogramma in Nederland gedaan. Maar ik heb zoveel uh, fans en die staan zo achter mij en die blijven toch gewoon naar mijn shows komen. Ik doe eigenlijk alles via de social media, want ik ben niet echt het type dat naar feestjes gaat en naar premières en de opening van elke envelop. Uh, er zijn er natuurlijk die dat wel doen. Social media zet ik in en uh, nou, het gaat eigenlijk als vanzelf, hè, die kaart verkopen. Ja. Uh, door de fans. En hij zegt, nou ja, zes theaters zijn al uitverkocht. En iedereen, zegt altijd, heel goed. Ja, iedereen zegt altijd van, nou, mijn fans zijn altijd dat doen we best, maar dat meent hij ook echt. Hij zegt ja. zonder die fans. Marco, dat is een brilliant, brilliant summary. Ja, yeah, 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 brilliant summary. Thank you. Um, I but noticed the envelope, but because <laughs> 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 it's the same in English. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, but I've got some great people around me. I think when you go through, I'm not a crisis, but when you go through difficulties, you know who your friends are. It's a cliche, isn't it? And yes, the friends you true. thought were there, some are not there. And the friends you never ever thought, or the people you never thought would be very very close, mm -hmm. are there. And that's really humbled me. There's some people in my life just now that I never ever thought would support me and have been amazing. And the people I did think would support me are not there. And I understand why. Um, and it's okay and it's not a criticism. It's just the fact that it's, it's a little bit disappointing. Yeah. But I always think of when I look at your shows or, or when I looked at your show, you didn't make a big entertainment thing about it. You were always honest. This is it and I that's think, it. I think nothing the reason more, I've been less. successful is because, you know, if I'm in Albert Hein or I'm, I'm in Jumbo or I'm, 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 I'm at the airport or wherever I am, people say, oh my goodness, first of all, you're small, you're, you're shorter than I thought you were. <laughs> that's <laughs> uh, true. About number, two, number two, they say, oh my goodness, you've got less hair than I thought you would have. And number three, they say, my goodness, you're exactly the same as you are. Huh. And I remember when I first came here, I got Wonderful That's advice. the biggest compliment you can get. Well, I got wonderful advice when I first came here. And uh, who was it from? Who was it from? I think it was from Matthias Scholten. It was from Matthias Scholten. And Matthias said to me, when from you're RTL. on stage, when you're on stage, yeah, be a star. And when you're off stage, remember who you are. Yeah. 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 And I thought, whoa, you can't get any better advice than that. And he says, do not show off. The Dutch do not like show offs. Mm -hmm. Don't ja. show off. Niet naast de schoenen gaan lopen. Blijf gewoon altijd jezelf. Yeah. Dus als je een ster bent op televisie, Nee, gewoon jezelf blijven bij. Onthoud wie je bent. Ja, yeah, so I, th I think, you know, if you go into Albert Heijn and you come out and you, you know, always have a box. I never use plastic bags. Too many, pl please stop using plastic bags. Everyone, there's too many plastic bags on the planet. You know, I live in Cyprus mm -hmm. and there's plastic bags all over the sea. Please stop. Yes. It, please. Um, please, please look after the planet. Um, that's me preaching a little bit. But, but you know, so, I come so, out of Albert Heijn with my box, mm -hmm, yeah. you know, and I've met a few stars who said, what are you doing here? We've got a housekeeper who does that for us. And I said, no, I think this is the most humbling thing because it's about having your feet on the floor yep. and not getting carried away with, with, with your life. We're out of time. Oh, that's not so good. No. Do you want to stay here? Yeah, I do. For, for, for a minute? I'm okay. going to stay.